Hi, Nicole here and welcome to another video. Today's video is all about stop motion basics, the gear you need, how to make one, and some of my tips and tricks with editing and getting them ready to go to post on social media. So if this is your first time dropping by, welcome. I am a professional photographer. I focus on brand photography and I wanted to create this channel to provide you tips and tutorials on all things branding. I pull from my real world experiences working with clients and I wanna bring you some helpful tools and help branding your business. Okay, here we go. Today's video is all about stop motion. Now, as a brand photographer, I too am a brand myself and I use stop motion all the time. It's just another creative outlet. It's just another way to engage with your audience, change things up. So I may do a stop motion of me gearing up, getting ready for a photo shoot or setting up my studio or perhaps a new gear that I'm working on. And things of interest like food photography or baking on when I'm not photographing people, places, and products. So you can really pull this into your business, show your unique business and personality and stop motion is easy enough to do nowadays before all these great apps, we had to make them all into Photoshop. Okay, first let's talk about gear. So for stop motion, you really need that overhead perspective. Now I've made them where I've set up in the car when I'm getting ready for a photo shoot. It's really your creative vision on where you're placing your photos, but typically stop motion is from above. So what I use, now I have all my pro gear, so don't feel like you have to go to this extreme level, but I have a tripod. Now I've had this tripod um, this Gitzo tripod for over 10 years. It's just the day, looks like the day I bought it. I come from the philosophy of buying and investing in gear so you don't have to buy it twice. So I certainly have had my money's worth out of this tripod, but use your own guide on how you wanna proceed with the tripod. Now, this tripod, when I extend all the legs out, I'm about 51 and a half inches, but there's a center bar to this tripod that you can see. When I extend this center bar, I can get all the way up to 64 inches high. And that is helpful when, depending on what you're shooting for your stop motion, you could be at tabletop, which is what I'm gonna to demonstrate today, or you could be on the floor doing a stop motion as well. It really determines the size of the objects that you are doing the stop motion. If they're really small, you can get away with tabletop. If they're bigger, like a gear bag, I've done that with my gear, you may wanna be on the floor. And the distance also matters. So if you have a short little tripod, you're only gonna be able to get so far and so far away and higher than the object or your display down below for your stop motion. Okay, so we have our tripod. I also have this extension arm or a boom arm. And essentially I, this is all enough. This gear is definitely enough for all my pro equipment. So attaching my 5D Mark IV uh, Canon camera. But since I have all of this, I simply just add this Joby accessory for my iPhone and I attach it to the end of the boom, set it up and it works great. Other things to consider, depending on your tripod and how it's being stabilized, you may wanna consider a small sandbag and I'll outline all of this down below just so you have a reference and can um, research, but a smaller sandbag a level is also nice because this is magnetic. I can kind of stick it on the top of my tripod and I can make sure that it's level because I hate getting into post-production and having something not straight. Okay. The last bit of advice for your setup here is considering your background for your stop motion. 
So you can use your kitchen table, your kitchen island. You can also add in, it's gonna move over, any backdrops that you have. So I've made this for a client. I may use that one for today. You may just want it white. You could have it color. But if it's going to be seen in the stop motion, those little details can really make your stop motion pop. So think about that. Now, the last bit is lighting. I use the Flashpoint system for photography gear and I also can keep it on the modeling light, which I have here in this video. So I can utilize that to light up my stop motion. You can also use natural light if you wanna go up to a large window or sliding glass door. So many possibilities, but definitely consider your light because especially since we're using an iPhone for this demonstration today, the better the light, the better the end product for their iPhone stop motion. So I thought for today's stop motion, I would demonstrate making a food recipe. Now, if you're not a baker, if you're not in the food industry, it's okay, all these things still apply. I thought showing something that has a long process, multiple steps, you can relay this to if you make a product, you could have all your gear. If you have a brand client for um, kitchenware, you could be showing how the kitchenware works with making a recipe. It really can apply to kind of anything out there. Just think of your business and your products and how you can move things around to make your stop motion. Okay, let's get set up. Okay, so I'm going into my stop motion app, and as you can see, various, um, all your previous stop motions pop up, but we wanna start a new movie. So we're gonna do the plus sign for new movie, and now you can see my tabletop. So I can lower this to have it closer, but my thought is I'm going to have this on Instagram, so I'm going to be cutting it square, so I definitely want enough room on either side here. Okay, in this app, we're gonna hit the little camera on the upper right-hand corner, and I'm gonna be attaching it here. Maybe if I rotate it this way, I'm just gonna to have to change where the bowl is. But here are a few things, as you can see the camera is up here, so I'm gonna just rotate it this way back again so I can explain some of these buttons. The first thing is, so I'm using the camera facing forward, but if I wanted to change the orientation of the camera, it's in that the little stripes in the bottom right-hand corner, and I click on camera, you have rear, front, and wide. So we're gonna keep it rear. That's good, done. Okay, the next key thing is the timer, which is right above that red circle and this is where you need to make a decision on if you want your hands to show in the movement of the stop motion or if you want to just fluid and have almost the recipe since we're baking today kind of come together almost on its own. So if you want your hands, you're going to be like the one to two, maybe three second zone. If you don't want your hands, you're going to be five and higher. And if you have multiple moves you need to make in your stop motion, you wanna be in that higher section. If you just have maybe like one pour, maybe five seconds is all you need. So today we're gonna to do five seconds. I'm gonna click done. And now the timer is blue and the button is red. So we're ready to go. At any time during this process, you can hit the red button and pause. You can kind of set up the next thing hit the red button again, and it will then continue and add on to that same stop motion, which is really convenient. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna set it in place. So I'm gonna rotate this around so I have access to that button. I'm going to secure it into my overhead position, and then I'm going to move this so I can see, and it's tough when you have um, you could have this facing up so you can see, or if you wanted to be looking down, you could do that as well. Okay, that looks pretty good in the center. Okay, so because the camera, you can see it's almost like off-centered here, but um, it looks pretty good from up here, and if I needed to rotate, I can rotate in post. All right, so let's get going. So for this recipe, 
we are making some birthday scones and I have everything organized and laid out. So let me just actually show you that, show you kind of like my setup. This is a great tip. If you're doing stop motion, you really want to have everything organized and ready to go. So then you have all your steps in place, all your gear ready, and then it will go much smoother. All right, let's get this back into place. And here we go, let's make the stop motion. Okay, so I have everything I need. So I'm going to click the red button and you will see it starts cycling around. Okay, it's not cycling around. they must have been leaning on a button oops but this will give a good <laughs> always protect that gear i'm going to pause it no, it's not going to pause for me pause there we go there might be something leaning i might just go the other way then how about this i'm going to go to my front camera i'm going to look up here i'm going to rotate it something might be leaning on this. Okay, that's secure. Okay, so now I need to move this bowl again. So now I'm going to look up and do this. You could be looking down and looking up. So I'm going to look up because there's something leaning on that, that um, page there. And I want to make sure this is sort of in the center, get it lined up again. We have our timer set to five seconds. So every five seconds is going to take a picture and essentially stop motion is that it's just a series of pictures coming together to show some movement. Super fun. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to hear it click on the first shot. Okay, now I'm ready to go. I'm going to pour the flour in. Okay, I'm going to pour the sugar in. Baking powder, salt. Okay, so this could be a video on kitchenware. I could be using this. I don't want my hands shown. I'm just gonna have it fluid come together and then move. Okay, so now I'm gonna pause it I put those main ingredients in. Now I'm gonna be dumping in some butter for these scones and then using the pastry cutter. So I could then add in my hands on these if it's gonna take longer, but um, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my five seconds. I might just put some butter in at a time. And I brought paper towels with me because I know this is gonna get messy. Okay, so now I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna pause it and I'm going to do the next step completely off camera. And then when it comes back to the next image, it's gonna be all crumbly exactly where we want it to be. But I want to keep it at the same. I don't want to move around too much because then you'll see the, the change. Now, if you wanted to show your hands doing the whole process, that's totally up to you. And I've done that before and it's fun. But I just want to try something new when it's completely fluid and you don't see the person's hand at all and everything kind of flows together. This is just a fake um, marble, kind of like a peel and stick on a foam board for my backboard here. Use it a lot for my food photography. Okay, 
So I know milk is going to be in the next setup. So I have that ready to go. And I'm gonna pack all this up and get organized. And I know my vanilla is next. Okay, so we're gonna make, make the well. So the next shot, you'll see all this incorporated. Okay, and here we go. We're just gonna do another shot. I'm gonna pour the butter in now. Wait for the shot. I'm gonna pour the vanilla, have it take the shot. Okay, now I'm gonna pause it. And I'm going to use either a wooden spoon or if I'm using this product, maybe I'm highlighting if I'm doing a, a sponsored brand post and I'm a food blogger and I wanna highlight using this product. Another great way to use stop motion in a fun and engaging way and get your audience interested. Okay. So I'm basically just incorporating this until it's shaggy. So it's totally up to you and where you want to start and stop. And it's really your creative outlet. See how much you want to share. And then I will shut everything down while this is baking. And then I'll do out of the oven shot when it's done. And then this also has a little glaze that can go on top. So, okay, this is looking pretty good. I'm going to, so if I was highlighting this product um, for like a food blog, obviously I would want all that mixing and me using the bowl in the, or the spoon in that shot. Okay. So I'm gonna take that shot. Okay, now I'm gonna pour these in. That'll be fun, fun pop of color. Okay, I'm gonna pause it. Come on. My knuckle doesn't work as well. Now I'm gonna mix this. Okay, so now I'm gonna take another shot of it incorporated. Okay, and pause. I'm gonna move this, take my board, get that lined up. Pour this out, take a shot. Here we go. Okay. Pause. All right, just gonna need this. Okay, so I have this to cut into my nine triangles, or eight wedges, I mean. And I thought it'd be cool to see this happening. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take this away. So then my next shot is of them on the tray, ready to go. Three, two, one. Okay, so at this phase, I'm gonna go up and bake them. I'm gonna keep everything as is. And then when I come back, I'm gonna put the finished tray on here. And then if I wanna do the, um, if I wanna do the glaze, I'll do the glaze, but this is essentially where we are. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, so as you can see, the scones are baked and I just put it right back into the position I was in before, before putting it into the oven. So I'm just gonna take a photo of this 
We have that take. Now I'm gonna stop it. These need to cool for 10 minutes in here and then they need to go on the wire rack. Before I can drizzle on the glaze, they need to cool completely. So again, with recipe videos, they're gonna take a little bit more staging and preparation because of all the different steps. So I'm going to shut everything down again and then I'll come back for that final um, touch and then we'll have our final product. Okay. Okay, so the scones have cooled completely down. Now it's time for the glaze. So I'm gonna take a shot. So to continue the stop motion, we're going to take this image, okay? And now this is where the glaze can come in. We could do it individually. I'm just going to glaze them all. So then the next shot. So with recipes and food, clearly there's a lot of, depending on how elaborate the recipe is, a lot of steps, a lot of prep. But just like with product photography, if you have a whole process of making your product, um, this is a great little way to kind of highlight what you do, how you're unique. And you can highlight that to your clients. And you can highlight that to your audience. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna take another picture. Okay, and then I have some additional, we could put some more on, oops, my hand's gonna be in that one. Okay, we can add those. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna stop. Now I'm going to take the camera down and I'm gonna show you. Let's run through what this looks like. So I might just show the last bit. Yep, it does. Okay, so I'm just gonna use the um, arrow at the top here. I took 51 images for this stop motion and I'm just gonna slide all the way down to the end. So here's a great editing tip. If your hand does happen to get into a stop motion with this app, I can hold down, I can just tap on it and you have all these options. So I'm just going to delete that one. I'm gonna do the same, delete this one. Okay, so this is the beginning. I'm now going to run through and we're gonna see how this looks. Okay. So you saw my hand there once. Oh, neat, okay. Nice, okay, so I'm just gonna run through again and see if I see my hand. So on, I'm just gonna stop it. On the board, you do see my hand pulling the board here. So I might, oops, let's play it through. There we go. Oops, let's go to this one. I'm gonna delete that shot. And this one didn't have the sprinkles in it, so we're gonna delete that shot. Let's see, then it goes here. Okay, so, so now I can bring this in and you can, um, just on your iPhone in the edit feature, you can rotate, you can crop, which is nice, um, and you can make um, some edits. It's looking like this might have been slanted slightly, so I can correct that in post. Okay, I'm gonna stop here. This looks good. I'm now going to, in the upper left-hand corner or down below here, if I was looking at it different ways, I'm now going to click on select. I'm going to click on that button, that circle, and now I have all these options. I can make a copy, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to export the movie. And now, as you can see, you can send it to all different places, but I'm just gonna save the video to my camera roll and when I go into my camera roll, I'll be able to then make any um, adjustments that I need. So let's go over to the camera roll, sway, edit. Okay, so let me, go like this, here we go. Okay, let's go here, here. I want that square. I want it over here a little bit more. Okay, let's see how that looks. 
Bowl's moving around a little bit. There we go. All right. Okay. So I'll just tweak that a little bit, bring it over, but I'm liking that um, so far. And we just need to bring over that crop slightly. There we go. So it ends on that full screen. Oh, edit. Just don't want it to, there we go. Let's try it now. Since things kind of move around, here we go. Okay. All right. So then I will save that and send it to Instagram and we will have our stop motion recipe, but you can see how lining things up. You can either make little marks on your board as well to keep everything straight and in line and always adjusting. Um, but that is kind of the basics with an iPhone stop motion. It could just be an unboxing of things coming out of the box, or it could be things moving through it. Um, but as you can see, kind of maintaining that um, tight angle and making sure your background is how you like it is always important. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions and have fun creating your stop motions. Bye.